Hi, and welcome to the Ruckus Analytics Introduction to Data Studio walkthrough. I'm Terry Henry. So today we're going to talk about an overview of Data Studio. Uh, we will cover chart types and variables, um, lab setup, uh, importing a dashboard from a gallery, manipulating existing charts, uh, we'll create new charts of several kinds. So total clients, controller inventory, top switches by errors, AP count by model, underpowered APs, that's POE power, um, average airtime utilization by zone, 6.1.1 controllers with older zones. Uh, we'll create a new dashboard, we'll schedule some reports, and then uh, import and, and export uh, dashboards from a file is what we're gonna cover today. So uh, introduction to Data Studio. Uh, so, you know, Data Studio does many, many things. It, um, you know, it, it has some amazing features like uh, service validation and, and help desk integration and client troubleshooting and incident analytics, which are my two favorites, uh, configure change analysis, lots of reporting. Uh, but, you know, one of the the best pieces, in my opinion, is Data Studio, right? If there is any report that you can't find, and there is many, many built-in reports, right? As you can see here, um, this is just one of, which is a client health report, but there is over a dozen built-in reports, and each one of those can be manipulated by date range, by uh, AP or which APs are in the report, which switches are in the report. Uh, you could drill down to specific SSIDs or specific radios. You could um, change the date range if I didn't say that already. Uh, and you can export these to PDF or, or a CSV file. And you can even schedule them for email delivery to, to one or multiple recipients, you know, daily, weekly, monthly. So lots you can do with the built-in reports. But sometimes all that's not enough, right? The analytics database holds millions of values and a year of data that's waiting for you to extract it and explore it. Uh, so no matter how obscure the chart graph or table that you need is, it, it, you can build it with Data Studio. So uh, maybe you want a report of you know, underpowered APs or top switches by port error or average airtime utilization by AP group, by zone, by domain. Uh, maybe you want zones running a different firmware version than your controller. Those are all available to you. You just need to know how to build them. And we are going to go through that in this class. So Data Studio, it's a, it's a next generation reporting tool. So it, it replaced uh, Data Explorer if you've been a long time user of Ruckus Analytics. Um, and uh, it's, it's really a tool to access all of the, the data that goes into, into analytics. So, uh, you know, anything that's, uh, that's, that's connected to analytics goes into a massive database. Um, and you can get that data you're looking for, uh, you know, by building your own graphs and charts. So um, the Data Studio page in analytics displays uh, a home tab a dashboard tab, a charts tab, a gallery tab, and a schedules tab. And we're going to walk through each one of those to give you an idea of what's what's in those tabs. So the first one we have is a home tab. So it's a personal collection of, you know, your dashboards and charts that you've created and those that you have marked as favorites. So, uh, you know, by clicking on the, the star on any uh, chart or, or dashboard, you can add that to your favorites, which then shows up here in your, uh, in your home tab under, under the favorites tab. And anything you've created shows up on the mine tab within this, this um, within the home tab. Uh, next, we go over to the dashboard tab. So the dashboard tab, it's, it's a collection of all the, uh, all the dashboards that, that you have that are published within your uh, analytics instance. And a dashboard is simply a collection of charts, right? So, ch so charts that either you've created or someone else has created um, or ones you've imported, they can all be added into a customized dashboard. And then within that dashboard, you can, you can add some other elements, uh, which we'll talk about later. 
Next, we have the Charts tab. And so the Charts tab, is it's the backbone of, of how your, your data is accessed, right? So it is um, Charts aid in visualizing network data from, from a simple pie chart uh, or a big number chart up to some really complex, you know, network graphs and, um, uh, uh, and you know, tables, things like that. Uh, so there's a variety of options to choose from to visualize data. Uh, and, it, you know, tables are very easy. And I would recommend you start with tables or maybe big number or pie charts to get you going before you get into some of the more advanced chart types. Next, we have the gallery. And so the gallery is, is, is similar to reports in that they're, you know, native to the system, right? So they are uh, a collection of different dashboards. And each one of those dashboards contains multiple charts, which you can import to get you going. So those are divided into, um, into three different verticals. Uh, and then, you know, there's multiple charts in each vertical that you can import uh, to, to get you quickly and easily running uh, inside, of, uh, inside of Data Studio. Lastly, we look at the Schedules tab. So the Schedules tab uh, is the ability to schedule uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, um, you know, charts or dashboards that you want delivered to your email or to multiple emails. Uh, so, you know, going across the top, we have um, status, which displays the, the status, you know, successful or failed of your schedule report. We have last run, which is the last time that that report was run, um, uh, including the time zone. So you'll notice the in this one on the screen here, you'll notice the uh, minus three. So it's so it's a minus three time zone. Um, then we have the name of the of the report that was run, uh, the schedule, and again that relates to the time zone that was in the last run. So you can set the time zone when you schedule the report. Uh, the owner, so who owns that um, that 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 or who created the scheduled report? Um, active, whether it's active or not, right? You can disable a report uh, and activate it again later if you wish. Um, so only the owner of the schedule report uh, and users with admin privileges can enable or disable a schedule, by the way. Uh, and then lastly, actions. So um, what actions can you perform? So you can't see anything in that box that's showing there. But if you hover over a uh, over the live tab, it's going to show you um, execution log or be able to edit or delete a scheduled report in there. So we'll move on to uh, chart types and variables here. So there is 36 possible chart types. Um, and these are called visualizations in Data Studio. Uh, so as the name implies, it represents how you see or how you visualize the data. So you know, looking at this screen, we can see some very common ones, such as big number, which is a single variable. Uh, a pie chart, which could be based on multiple variables, but very, very common. Uh, table, which I mentioned earlier, is probably the easiest type and most used type of all the different visualizations, uh, whether you want an inventory or you want, you know, some some complex, um, um, you know, chart build, you can probably do with a table. Um, there are some other things. Gauge, gauge would be similar to a big number, just in a more, um, you know, in a, in a prettier design. Um, and then there's, you know, uh, time series line chart. So a line graph, of, but based on time. Um, and, you know, some other ones, heat map. So the color of the box changes based on on um, on the variable, on the number that, that's in that box. Uh, declining funnel, you got scatter plots, you got a word cloud. Um, not very commonly used, but uh, these are just a few examples. And then they get, you know, really, really complex from, from here. But th those are all available to you. Uh, so you can build, you know, a plethora of different types of, of uh, charts and graphs. So um, a few things we have to understand. So, so everything you do is based on a data set. 
so the first thing when you start to build a chart of any type, you're going to choose your data set. And so the data set is a collection of metrics and columns, right? And so, um, so if you're in, in any of the charts and you click on this thing that looks like graph paper here, uh, it's going to show you the metrics and columns that are within that data set. So here we see a data set called AP inventory. And within AP inventory, we see AP count, maximum offline duration, AP uptime for metrics. And then we see many columns. So there's actually substantially more than this within this data set. So these are basically the variables that you can use to build a chart within that specific data set. There is multiple data sets available to you. And then each one of them has different variables in terms of metrics and columns, right? So a column is a dimension. So it represents, uh, uh, you know, data like AP Mac and, and switch name, controller version. Uh, so these are kind of a single um, a single value, whether that value is a word or that value is a number, it's a single value as opposed to a metric, which is a metric is a number uh, and it's used to measure a column value in some way or shape, right? So, you know, average airtime utilization, client session count, switch PoE utilization, these are all metrics. So they're, they're, they're basically an equation used to measure some kind, something in a column. Um, so to put that in perspective, uh, if we are, if it was being used for people, a column might contain your first name, your last name, your gender, your address, your birthday, your phone number. Uh, the metric, on the other hand, may be something that's used to measure those things, such as IQ score, right? So you could then build a chart uh, that groups the average IQ score by age group or by gender uh, or a combination of those, right? So um, and then you can filter, you know, filter based on something like anyone who doesn't have an IQ score because they've never taken the test, you can filter those out so they don't skew your results. So it may, and you know, this, that, that chart might be perfect for a bar graph say, but you know, it would not be valuable for a gauge or a big number graph. So the, the type of, um, the type of chart you choose also depends on the type of data that you want out of your uh, chart. So um, this is a bit of an advanced concept and there's actually an advanced class that's beyond this. Um, but uh, the way a function is, is built is with an equation based on, on something usually in the column, right? So um, if we look at, if we looked on that previous slide, let me just go back here. Um, you'll see this, this F here beside the to any of the functions, any of the metrics, excuse me. And there's oh, sometimes in within the column as well, there's, there's an F there. There's also this time symbol and there's an ABC symbol. So uh, the, the clock symbol represents time, right? So um, you may be measuring something based on time, you know, in the last day or week or month or, or, or year. Um, the, the F symbol is a function and a function is some kind of, uh, it, it, a function lets you manipulate um, your data in ways uh, beyond doing simple arithmetic, right? So, so a metric uses things like average, minimum, maximum, count, median, uh, and multiple other things um, to, to build an equation, to do something with a, with a value. Um, so the, the, the sum of a function or the, the, the result of a function will be a number. Um, so you could build your own equations under the custom SQL tab under, you know, metric or sort by or filter inputs, uh, to, to build, you know, anything you want basically, but there, uh, there is multiple functions built in. So if you hover over the, um, the circled question mark, right? So you'll see a circle question mark beside this, uh, in this insert here for AP count and, and AP uptime. If you hover over that circled question mark, it will show you what equation it's using uh, to, to build that function, to get a value out of that function. Um, and again, we cover this in the advanced course more so, um, but for now, um, you know, just, just know that it is, it, it, it results in a number that's measure, a measure of uh, something in columns. 
So your available data sets, there is, as of this recording, there is 16 available data sets to choose from. Um, and as we just talked about, so that the, the um, data set contains the metrics uh, to, in, in which to match and filter on, right? So um, you'll see things like, you know, AP inventory, AP info and statistics, applications, AP rogues. There's multiple things to choose from. And of course, you know, that each one contains different variables. Uh, you'll note that a few of these are, uh, are are marked with asterisks, which means that they're not available in Ruckus Cloud. So if Ruckus Cloud is feeding your analytics, then those data sets are not available. Um, you know, things like controller inventory doesn't make any sense, right? In cloud, you don't have a controller, so it wouldn't make any sense to have that data set. So just know that those three are not available, but, you know, it's, it's not that you couldn't pull uh, the same statistics from, from other data sets. So this is just for reference. There's a few slides here, and these are the reference slides specifically for um, for a smart zone fed uh, analytics. So there's there's some slight differences, as we noted on the on the previous page. A few of these do not exist, but you'll see that you know there is a column, and then there's metrics. So some of these have a lot of metrics. Some of them have only a few. You'll also note that a lot of the columns are repeated among the data sets, right? So you'll see here that, you know, controller Mac, controller model, controller name, controller serial, controller version is, uh, you know, across multiple different, different data sets. Um, so a lot of these are repeats. So just because you choose one specific data set doesn't mean that the variables you're looking for don't exist somewhere else. So you just need to find the data set that matches what you are trying to accomplish within the, the chart you're building. So there's uh, three different pages here to make up our um, 16 different available data sets as of this recording. Uh, so, you know, switch inventory, switch network, client sessions, client info and statistics, uh, all, you know, a different combination of columns and metrics. But these are for your reference. You can look, look back at them as you go. But again, you know, when you're building a chart, uh, if you choose a data set, then you can open that data set and look exactly at, at what is within that data set. So we're going to move on to labs. Uh, so I'm not going to cover how to set up a lab. You're, uh, if you are doing this on your own, then you can use your own analytics instance. Um, I'm assuming you know how to log into analytics. It's, it's uh, ruckus.cloud slash analytics. Um, if it's a standalone analytics instance, if not, if it's within cloud, then there will be a link to uh, analytics right within cloud there. So then we move on to uh, to how to import from a dashboard or how to import a dashboard from the gallery. Excuse me. Uh, so you got a few steps here. So first, we're going to choose the gallery tab. So we covered this five tabs already. So we're going to start in that gallery tab and then you can browse through the many pre-built dashboards uh, that can be imported and customized. Right. So as of this recording, there's 17 dashboards spread across three different verticals um, and just by hovering over them, you can see a preview of each one. Um, now, when you're when you're ready, you can use there's an import all, which will import all of those. You probably don't want to do that, but that's up to you. Um, or you can import an individual one. So if we click on on the icon on the the import icon under each one of these dashboards, then you can you can import them uh, uh, one by one. So if you click on one of those, and so for this lab, we're going to click on wireless network uh, and click the import, and then it's going to pop you up a box um, to confirm that you want to, uh, you want to import that. Uh, and then the second part of this lab is uh, continuing on. Uh, we're going to, after you import it, you can go to the dashboard tab, or actually it's going to pop up the dashboard tab for you automatically, and you're going to see your newly imported dashboard with your name beside it as uh, created by. Um, you'll, um, so if you click on the name of that dashboard, you can see that it's highlighted in blue there. It's going to open your dashboard, uh, and it's automatically going to populate with data. So you can scroll down to see the many charts that are integrated into 
Um, you'll notice too that at the top here uh, in this in this red box, it says draft, right? So that means that even though you've imported it, only you can see that dashboard until you click on that draft button and then it publishes it. And once it's published, then all the other users in your instance can see that dashboard. But until then, it is invisible to, uh, to all the other users. So we'll pause here uh, if you wish, and you can, uh, you can work through this lab. It should take you about five minutes or so. Um, and come back and we will walk through it together when you're ready. Okay, so welcome back. Um, I'm hoping you successfully accomplished that, but, uh, but just to walk through this really quickly. So we're gonna choose the gallery tab as we talked about before. We're gonna import wireless networks, right? We could type import to confirm and import. It's then gonna import my dashboard. Uh, and as I said, so it automatically pops up dashboard here um, I will see my imported dashboard right here called wireless networks. I can click on it to open that. And it's going to populate that data. So there's a fair amount of data that it's pulling, especially in my instance, there's many, many APs. Uh, so it automatically populates that data. You can scroll down to see all of your imported charts. It's still working on a few of them. Um, and, and you can, you can manipulate some of these, right? So you can change you know, the filters on them, for example, you can click this to look at what's contained within that chart. So you can, you can look at it and explore. You can see the query, you can maximize it, download the image, export it. Um, and as we talked about, there's a draft here, right? So we can click that to publish it if we want other users to be able to see that, that uh, dashboard. Um, you can click it again to go back to draft. We could also click that star here to favorite it. So we talked about before about our home page. So if I click that, then it's going to show up as a favorite within my within my home tab. So now we will move on to lab two. So lab two, we're going to manipulate existing charts. So we're going to work on the charts that you just uh, just imported. So if you go to your charts tab, uh, your center tab, you're going to see all of the charts that were imported uh, when you imported from the gallery just a minute ago. So you will see all of those with your name beside them as created. Uh, you can see their names. You'll be able to see the different visualization types. So in this case, we have things like big number and table and time series line charts, uh, regular um, uh, pie chart. So multiple different things are imported uh, as part of that dashboard, right? So as I said before, a dashboard is simply just a combination of multiple different charts and you can build your own dashboards. Um, you know, you can remove things from an existing dashboard and add new ones. It's, it's totally customizable up to you. Um, so then we're, you can click on the chart name to open an individual chart. So we're going to open uh, top APs by client count pie chart. Um, so you'll notice the two different tabs here for data and customize. So data is um, visualization type, group by, metrics, uh, all of the, the manipulations that change the variables within the chart. And then the customize tab uh, contains things, chart options, right? Labels, uh, the shape of the pie, multiple different, different things for, for how it looks, how it appears. Um, so, so what we're gonna do is from the data tab, try adding a few more parameters in the group by option, um, and then rerun the query to see what it looks like. So those are up to you, you know, in, in this example, we chose uh, AP name, AP internal IP address, radio, AP serial. You can choose others if you want, uh, but those are some good ones to start with. And then, um, you know, try changing your row limit to 20, for example, uh, and try changing a few of the parameters within uh, your customized tab to see how that affects the look. So change the color scheme, change the inner and outer radius of the pie shape, and see how that, how that looks to you. Um, so, you know, you'll come up with something that, that 
looks like this, you know, when you're done, right? That's that, or, you know, depending on, on the parameters you choose, it may or may not look like that, but something similar. Um, so then we'll see the results of your changes, right? So we added additional parameters. So from the previous slide, when your pie chart only had a couple of parameters to this one where you've added in a few extra things like IP address that was, wasn't there before and radio, um, we've changed the visualization so, it, so it, the, your pie looks very different from an inner and outer radius uh, potentially. Um, so what you'll see is it's changed to altered at the top, which means that changes have been made that have not been saved yet, right? Um, so we can hover over that altered and it's going to show you all the changes that have been made since it was saved last. Uh, you can click on save and then it's going to prompt you to overwrite your existing chart, which will not just overwrite that chart, but update the dashboard as well. Or you could do a save as, and you could do a save as with a different chart name. Um, and at the same time, you can choose to add it to a dashboard or create a new dashboard all at once during the save. Um, so I want you to do that. I want you to, to, uh, to click save and, and, uh, and do a save as and enter a new chart name. You can enter a chart name with your initials after it so you don't confuse from other people's charts. Um, you can add it to a dashboard if you like. Um, but just for now, just click save on it. And then, uh, and then um, you'll see that the, the, the altered version of your chart at the top of the charts tab, right? So, so your new chart is gonna appear at the top of that charts tab. Um, and then also uh, take a minute to test out the export to JSON, export to CSV, or if you click the lines here, you can export it to a, to a JPEG as well. So take a minute to to play with those and uh, and see some results. So we're going to move on to the first uh, create a new chart, and in this case, it's going to be total clients. Um, so in this case, we're going to create a big number, which is one of the easiest to create. Um, and it's, it's metric only. So there's no filters. It's, it's a really easy one to create. Uh, so essentially, you know, your finished chart is just going to be a single number. Uh, so one variable only for, for big number, um, just like gauge. So you're going to have a title and you're going to have a big number. And that's really all there is to, uh, to creating a big number. So to create that, you're gonna go into your charts tab and you're gonna click the plus chart button. Um, then you're gonna choose a data set. So your data set is, in this case, is gonna be client info and statistics from the pull down. Um, under the charts, choose big number under popular or all charts will also show you big number. Uh, and then we're gonna click the uh, create new chart button, right? So um, then, uh, every chart is going to start off as as untitled for its title. And so you can click on that box and then give it a name. So we're going to call it total clients. Um, again, to avoid conf confusion, you probably want to go total clients dash and then your initials, something like that, so that you don't confuse it with others. Um, under metrics, we're going to choose the plus sign and then uh, add unique client Mac count. Uh, is what we're going to choose under metrics there. Finally, you're going to run your query uh, and save your chart. So, um, and then have a look at the, at the data section uh, under view results and view samples to get an idea of the data pulled during the query. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at that when we take this up. Uh, and optionally, try adding a filter to see only um, say say clients on the 2.4 band right so filters can filter out things like you know unknown or uh, things you don't want to see so filter is a very very useful um, uh, part of creating charts there's a lot of things you want to filter that you want to include or not include in a particular metric or a particular chart uh, and so that's where you would use the filter variable so in this case we're going to filter to see only 2.4 and see how the number of total clients changes when you do that so 
take a minute to run through that. Uh, this should take you 10 minutes or so. Uh, and then uh, you can pause the video and we'll take it up when you get back. Okay, so uh, here we're going to go to charts, as we uh, previously talked about. So the first thing we're going to do, plus chart. Uh, first, we're going to choose a data set. So you can't do anything without choosing a data set, so that is the most important part. So we're going to go for client info and statistics. Uh, as I said, there's, there's several different charts, uh, different data sets to choose from, and each of them have different variables, but in this case, um, this client info and statistics is what we need. Uh, and generally those are self-explanatory, right? I mean, we're looking for um, uh, something to do with clients here. So this would make sense. They're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so then under, under popular here, we have big number, or you could choose all charts and all charts will show you the many different types of charts are, that are available to you. But uh, in this case, we're choosing big number. And then we do create new chart. Uh, so we are going to change the title. So click on the title here and, uh, we went total clients and then I'm going to use my initials so I don't confuse it. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to under metrics here, we're going to add some metrics. So we are starting off really simply this time and we're just going to use unique client uh, Mac count in this case. Um, and uh, as we talked about before, under functions, you can you can hover over that and see what it was using. So it's 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 doing a distinct count of client Mac addresses. So even if a client Mac shows up uh, under, say, multiple APs or multiple controllers or whatever the case, it's it's not counting that it's counting distinct, which means only one um, uh, only one count per Mac address. So we'll choose unique client count. Um, there's other things you could do in here under simple and under custom SQL, you can get far more complicated, but for now, we are just gonna use client Mac count. And again, this is big number. So big number is only one variable. So the next thing we're gonna run that query. So that query is showing us, you know, 44.2 thousand uh, unique Mac addresses. Um, and this is based on time as well. So, um, so it is, it is generally over uh, an amount of time. So this is last day. So we could manipulate this to, you know, week, month, quarter, year, uh, customized. So you can, you can change that as well over time. But in this case, we're just choosing uh, last day. Um, you can manipulate filters here. So uh, we are going to do that in a minute. Um, so what we talked about though is you can view your results. So here's the here's the actual number that's not rounded up. So that's that's the total number, and then you can view samples. And view samples is very very helpful uh, if you're looking for something say to filter on, or you're looking to create some kind of custom SQL. It will show you um, all of the variables that it pulled from from your uh, from your metric here. The things that you can filter on. So, um, you know, controller Mac or controller model or zone name, or, you know, so maybe you want, you want to know the total clients by zone or the total clients by, uh, by AP group or, um, you know, uh, or radio type or channel. These are all the things you can filter on. So it's not showing you those because a big number is just a single, a single number, but you know, these are very, very useful in, in other types of charts, tables, graphs, et cetera. Uh, so then our optional, so that, that's all we needed to do for that. But then our number eight was uh, try to add a filter. So here we're gonna go to filter. Um, you can do some very exotic custom SQL filters, but in this case, we're gonna keep it simple. So we're gonna filter, uh, in this case, we're gonna choose band. So we'll choose band. Uh, we have 
12 different operators to choose from. So equals, not equals, greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, um, in, not in, uh, if you're using multiple variables or um, uh, even to, to filter by, uh, uh, by variable string, you've got like and, and I like. But in this case, we're gonna use equals. Uh, and then uh, our band is 2.4. Uh, we could have used five, we could use six, but we'll run query and that number changes. So those are unique unique clients that are on the 2.4 network, right? So you can you could play with those filters. You know, I could have changed this to five, for example, and it will show me the unique MAC addresses that are on the five radio. So, uh, so that is the end of this one. So we will now move on to our next lab. So in this case, we're gonna create a controller inventory. So in this one, we are going to, um, we'll do a group by, which we haven't done before, and we're building a table, which we haven't built before. Um, so again, Going to the charts tab, you're going to do plus chart. You're going to, under data set, you're going to choose controller inventory. Uh, now, this one doesn't exist if you're using the cloud version of analytics, right? So um, you could choose something different, um, like, for example, um, maybe choose um, AP inventory and then, and then look for, instead of controller name, controller version, controller model, controller serial, use AP name, AP version, AP model, AP serial um, to give you to give you an inventory of all of your APs if you're on the cloud version because this one doesn't exist. But if you are on, on the uh, smart zone version, then uh, we'll use we'll use controller inventory in the pull down. Our chart is going to be a table from popular or from all charts. Um, and then click the create new chart. Uh, give it a title. So controller inventory dash your initials. Uh, and then in the group by choose controller name, controller version, controller model, controller serial. You can add some others if you feel like it. Totally up to you. Those are just going to add more columns into your into your chart you create. Um, and then run and, and save your query um, or save your chart, excuse me. Uh, so when you're done, it should look exactly like that one I have on the right. So pause here and we'll come back in a minute and build that together. So we're gonna to go to the charts tab again. We are clicking on our plus chart. Uh, we're choosing our data set. So controller inventory was our one or if you, again, if you're on the cloud version, you might want to choose AP inventory instead, but we're going to stick with, uh, we're going to stick with controller inventory. Uh, from popular, you could choose table, or from all charts, you could choose table. Uh, it exists somewhere else down in the categories as well, but um, it shows us a few examples of different types of tables you can build. So we'll just say, uh, we're just going to say create new chart, right? And so again, give it a title. So uh, this is going to be con just called uh, controller inventory. Dash in your initials if you want. Um, and then we are under group by here. We're going to choose a few different options. So there is many, many options to choose from. Um, Actually, in this case, a controller inventory, there's not that many. So we are going to choose controller name. Um, we will choose controller version uh, and controller model. And lastly, uh, controller serial. Uh, these can also be changed in the order and how they get grouped uh, and how they get laid out in your chart. Um, all depends on those on the order they're in. So you could just uh, click on one and drag it to a different order should you wish to. Um, but that's really all we need to do. So we're going to run that query. So here's our chart. Now you can also click on the columns if you want to sort by, uh, say, 
sort by controller version or, or sort by serial number, you could do that just by clicking on the column header. Um, and again, you can go and look at the, at the results that you pulled based on your filter, as well as the view samples, which is going to show you, you know, many additional sample types. Um, you can also add filters, as we talked about in the previous one. So if you want to filter out anything, you know, with a particular name or, or a particular um, controller model, you can filter by model, um, you know, things like that. So lots of, lots of ability there in terms of how you filter. Uh, but that's that's it for that one. So we will move on to lab five. So lab five, top switches by errors. Uh, so this is going to show us the top 10 switches by total error count uh, on the on the ports. So um, your your finished graph, your first one will be a table. Uh, and then secondly, you're going to build a pie chart uh, with a very similar one. So we, again, charts tab plus tab. Uh, data set is going to be switch network in this case. Under charts, you're going to choose table, create a new chart, give it a name, uh, top switches by errors, dash your initials. Uh, under group by, we're going to select um, switch name, switch model, switch serial. Under metrics, we're going to choose in, in errors and out errors because that's what we want our metric to be. That's how we're measuring uh, the, the um, top switches is by the, the in errors and out errors. Uh, we're going to set our, our row limit to 10 because we want to see top 10. Um, and then uh, the first time we've used a filter here, we are actually going to create a filter um, under filters, you're going to hit the plus. You're going to go to the custom SQL tab, pick having, and then uh, in the in the uh, from the pull down, and then choose the sum of in errors plus out errors is greater than zero. Um, so you know we don't want anything with zero errors. That's that's kind of irrelevant to us. We really only want to see errors. So we're just going to do it that way, uh, and then click save. Finally, run your query, save your chart. And then optionally go into your into your chart as you're done, change the visualization type type to pie chart, uh, and then reselect your metric as in errors. So a pie chart only has one metric, uh, so you're going to choose in errors as your as your metric in which to um, to measure on. But you know, try changing that into a pie chart and and see how that looks. So pause here. Uh, take 10 minutes and, uh, and build those out, and then we will be back to discuss them in just a minute. Okay, welcome back. So we are going to build our chart. So we go plus chart again. This should be getting easier for you. It should uh, be very, very simple. So down at the bottom, we're going to find switch network here. Um, under chart type, we're going to start with a table. So we're going to build a table and then create new chart. OK, we're going to give it a title. So in this case, our title is uh, top switches by errors. Hyphen your initials. Uh, then we are going to group by. So if we go down to group by, so you'll see the red shows things that, that, that are required, right? So we're going to choose group by. We're choosing um, switch name, switch model, switch serial. These are alphabetical, as you may, well, I think they are. They're not alphabetical. I apologize. So switch. Name. Switch model is next. Uh, and then switch serial. Uh, 
Okay, so those are our three. And then under metrics, we are going to choose uh, from the pull down here in error. And we will save that. And then we're going to go plus and uh, uh, out errors. There you are. Okay. And save that. So you'll see I now have two in errors, out errors. Um, and then we'll change our row limit from 5,000 to 10 because we only want to see the top 10. You could change whether you want to sort uh, descending, uh, which we do want to sort descending. We want to see the highest at the top. But depending on the kind of chart you're building, you might want not want to. Uh, you might want to see the lowest. Uh, and then, as I said, the first time here, we're going to build a filter. You can have simple filters, which are, you know, any of your columns with an operator and then a filter value. Um, but in this case, we're going to create a custom SQL. So, um, so what we want to is an in error and out error. You saw it was a uh, was a it was a function, right? It was a metric, and so we want to choose change this to having. So as it says here, where is used for columns and having is used for metrics. Uh, and then if we click this box, we're just going to do sum uh, of in, and this is case sensitive uh, plus. than zero. Okay, so save that, run our query. Okay, there we go. So we now have um, our top 10. Actually, there was only six. So there's only six switches with errors, actually. Um, so it, it was even less than top 10. Uh, but again, you know, a lot of these would be would be uh, outside those parameters. So if you looked at the at the view samples, you would see many that got filtered out actually with our with our filter. But that's how that's going to work. And then you know our optional was if you go back into your chart type, select here, change our chart type to a pi. There's pi, so we'll change it to a pi. Uh, and then when we change it to a pi, then we actually have to go back in and change our metric because it got rid of our metric when we when we changed that because we couldn't have two metrics. So it didn't want to decide for you. Um, and then we are going to change this metric to in error, save it, and then rerun our query. Simple as that. So there is our, uh, there's our chart. So um, then lastly, you know, you could save this um, and then, you know, add it to a new dashboard or not, but we're just going to save it like this. Okay, so there is that one, and we will now move on to the next uh, lab six. which is AP count by model. So uh, in this one, we are going to create a bar chart for the first time uh, of AP count by model. So we're going to click uh, plus chart under the chart tab. We're going to choose AP inventory under the data set. Uh, we're choosing a bar chart for the first time and create new chart. Change your title, uh, AP count by model dash your initials. Under metrics, very simple. You're choosing AP count. Under series, you're choosing AP count, and then run it and save it. So this should be quick. You should be a pro by now. Um, but you'll see your final graph should look like this. So from the most common AP models all the way down to there's a 79, uh, 79 82 at the bottom and you know everything in between. So uh, pause here, take a few minutes to build this out, and then we'll build it together in just a second.
Okay, welcome back. So we are again, chart stab. We're going plus chart. Uh, we are going to, in this case, our data set is AP inventory. Mm, third from the top here. Uh, then we are choosing a bar chart. So first time we've done a bar chart, as you can see, you could do many different types of visualizations. You could do some really cool bar charts, uh, but we'll just stick with a really basic one. Um, then we are going uh, EP count by model dash your initials. Okay. Uh, then we need two things. So we need a metric here. So metric is going to be AP count. We'll save that. And then under series, which is our other requirement, uh, we are choosing AP model. Uh, so here's AP model. So essentially your metric versus your series is your, your X and Y in your, in your graph type. Then we run that query and we have our chart. So really, really simple. Uh, then lastly, we're just going to save that. We'll do a save as uh, again, you can add to a dashboard. We're not going to do that, but simple as that. Okay. So we are going to move on to seven, which is underpowered APs. So um, you're going to be a pro at this. I know you're going to be quick. So from the charts tab plus chart, choose your data center, which is a uh, data set, which is AP inventory. Uh, choose a table, uh, create a new chart that changes its name to underpowered APs. Then we'll do a bunch of things in the group by. So AP name, model, serial number, AP max, zone, uh, POE mode, POE mode setting. So um, so what it, what the AP is set to versus uh, what it's running. Uh, under filter, we're going to add POE underpowered equals true for your filter. So it's going to remove all the APs that are that are correctly powered, right? We don't care if the POE is correct. We just care if the if the POE is not correct. Uh, and then you're going to run and save your chart. So take a minute. Uh, it is going to look like this when you're done. And then the second piece to this lab is you're going to create a pie chart. Um, so create a second one as part of this lab, uh, which is a pie chart. And then under the pie chart, uh, we are going to do a group by POE underpowered. Um, and then and then metric, you're going to add a custom SQL of count POE underpowered. So it's going to count those that are underpowered versus not the underpowered, and it's going to return a true or false in your pie chart. So when you're done, your pie chart should look like this. So pause here, and we will take this up in just a minute. Okay. So welcome back. I hope that was successful for you. So create the first one. We go uh, AP inventory. We are first, we're going to choose a table. So we're going to build our table, create a new chart. Um, and then we'll change our title as always to um, underpowered APs. Add my initials to it. Uh, we are going to go to group by. Um, so you have 37 options. We're going to use AP name, uh, AP model, AP serial, uh, AP Mac. Then we want uh, zone, or if you're if you're um, 
if you're on the cloud version, that may be a venue or AP group. You might want to choose something different um, since you don't have zones. Then we're looking for PoE mode. And uh, PoE mode setting. There we go. Okay, so we can run that now. Um, so it's going to give us our setting. It's going to give us our PoE mode, um, and then under filter here, we are going to filter for. Uh, In here somewhere is going to be PoE underpowered equals, and then lastly, this is going to be true, and we'll save that. So when we rerun that query, it's going to show me just the APs that are underpowered. And anything else, anything that was false, does not show up uh, in this um, in in this in this chart. So we'll save this one. And then the second part of this lab, we're going to create a pie chart. So again, with the charts, uh, we're going to create a new one. Uh, so it's going to be a pi. Oh, choose a data set. So the data set remains the same at AP inventory. And pi, create a new chart. Uh, and then we are going to, under untitled, we'll just go uh, underpowered AP count pi, and then your initials, your name, the name that you name it can be anything you want, but uh, we're just under group by, we're just going to do PoE underpowered. So really simple for this pi. Um, if I can find the variable, there it is. Uh, right, and then under metric, we're going to change this metric to, under custom, it's going to be a count, this is case sensitive, uh, and then PoE under power, so it's going to pull it out of the list for me, and save that. So this is what your metric should look like. Count PoE underpowered as a function, right? And we'll run that query. That's it. So I have 88.97% are not underpowered and 11.03% are underpowered. So there's my actual numbers right there. So if you just want a quick view of how many are underpowered versus not underpowered, then this pie chart is perfect to add to a dashboard. Uh, so lastly, save it. And we can move on to the next one, which is uh, average airtime utilization by zone. So let's move on. So this one, um, we're going to create, it's a, it's, it's a table again, and tables are probably the vast majority of what you're ever going to build. Not for sure, but, you know, um, mostly if you're doing anything with inventory or, you know, trying to, trying to create most reports, like, you know, say you call into support and they're like, send me a, uh, what models and serial numbers all of your controllers are running or, you know, or what models your APs are with their IP addresses and MAC addresses. You can generate that report in a, in a matter of a couple of minutes here. Uh, so in this case, we're going new chart. Uh, we're going to use air, uh, AP airtime and hardware for the first time. 
Uh, we're choosing a table. We create a new table, give it a name, group by zone, because in this case, we want to group by zone. Now, if, again, if you're on the uh, cloud version, you might want to group by uh, venue or, or AP group or something like that. Uh, so you can complete this. Under metrics, we're going to add AP count, average airtime utilization, average airtime busy, average airtime idle. You can add some others if you wish, but you know that's what, what, uh, what I'm recommending here. And then sort by average airtime utilization. So even though it's not the first column, um, it is, it is uh, going to be sorted by that in a descending fashion. Uh, so you're going to click the sort descending box from highest to lowest. Um, and then under server uh, page nation, page, page nation uh, you're going to limit your rows to 100. Uh, so we want 100 per page, and then you can have multiple pages. And finally, run uh, your query and save your chart. So pause here build that out for 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and, uh, and cover how to build that. Okay, welcome back. I hope you were successful, but let's build it together just in case. So we'll go to plus chart to add our new chart. Uh, our data set is AP Airtime and hardware uh, for the first time. Uh, and we are building a table. Uh, we are going to give it a name. So airtime utilization by zone. Hyphen your initials. Uh, we are under group by. Here we are grouping by zone. You could also group by domain. You could group by, you know, several different things, AP group. Um, but we're, we're just going to use zone in this case. Uh, and then under metrics here, we are doing um, uh, several different metrics. So AP count, there's one. So we'll save that. Uh, we're going to add a new one, which is average airtime utilization. Uh, there you are. So I'll save this. So you got to save each one of these. Um, average airtime busy. There you are. Okay. And then uh, um, average airtime idle would be the final one. Okay. As I said, you can add others to there. Um, and then under sort by, so it's the first time we've used sort by as well, we're going to sort by average airtime utilization because that's what we care about the most. So the other parameters are nice to see, but average airtime utilization is, is why you're building this graph, right? So we'll just save that guy. Uh, we are going to sort descending, so it's already checked off. Um, we're also going to turn on the server pagination. We're going to set this to a hundred so a hundred in a in a page at a time and then we'll run our query and see what happens so there's our query so um nicely it's actually shaded in these boxes as well so so that is um that is under the customize tab as well if you want to turn that on or off but it's it's giving you shading to give you an idea of of how those look so uh and then lastly we are going to save that, and you are good for this one. So, you know, feel free to play around with them anytime you want uh, and add additional, you know, parameters and filters and whatnot, but um, that's the basis of that. So then, uh, then we're moving on to lab nine, which is uh, uh, 611 controllers with older zones. So in this one, uh, we are going to um, build a, it's going to be another table. So AP inventory is your data set. It's a table. Uh, give its name as 611 controllers with older zones. Um, obviously, if you are using the cloud version, you don't have a controller. So you may want to choose something, something different. Um, uh, 
to, to, to filter on. But um, under group by, we're going to choose controller name, zone, controller version, AP version, and then filter. So this is a combination filter for the first time. So we're going to add a filter of AP firmware version is less than 6.1.1 and uh, controller firmware version is greater than or equal to 6.1.1. So essentially this, this filters anything um, that the controller version is at least 6.1.1 and you have a zone running less than 6.1.1. And so this is a really useful table actually because often folks will upgrade their smart zone and then forget to upgrade their zone. So you may have zones running older versions. Your zones might be running, you know, 5.2.2 or 6.0 or 6.1 uh, and, you know, you just forget about it. So it, in order to find this manually, you'd have to go through each one of your zones and try to find who's running a, a version not equivalent to your controller. In this case, we could run one report from analytics and, and get an inventory of your entire network, your entire environment, um, you know, that, that anything that is not running the same version as the controller. So uh, take 10 minutes, build this out, come back, and we will build it together. Okay, welcome back. I hope that was successful. Um, so what we were what we were doing here is we were going to build a new chart. So charts tab, new chart. Uh, this is AP inventory. You guys should be pros at this by now. This is the last chart we're creating, by the way. Um, then we are using table. We'll create a new chart. We'll give it a name. So it is uh, 6.1.1 controllers with older zones. Add your initials uh, under group by. So group by here, we're going to add a parameter. So controller name, zone, controller version. and AP version. So, you know, feel free to add other things, but those are the most important for this particular, there you are, AP version. Uh, and then, uh, so that's all we need there. We don't need metrics or performance metrics or sort buys. Um, then we need under filter here, we need to add two different filters, right? So we're gonna add a filter of, uh, there's AP version and it is Okay, we'll save that. And then we're gonna add a new one. So this is going to be controller firmware version. Is uh, greater than or equal to 6.1.1. So we've got those two, just as you saw in the, in the example and then we'll run the query. And, oh, my apologies. It did not take the value I typed in before. Okay.
so now you'll see that the controller version, so you see all these controller versions that are at least 6.1.1, uh, and then you'll see AP versions that are less than. So here's a 5.2.2 zone, here's a 6.1.0 zone. Um, there is 6.0.0 zones uh, on a 6.1.1 controller. So that, that may be on purpose, but it may not. It may have been an accident. So um, so that's, that's uh, a really useful report to run. So we'll save that. All right, so that's saved and we can move on to the next lab, which is creating a new dashboard. So lab 10, creating a new dashboard. So to create a new dashboard, we are going to click on the dashboards tab. So uh, go to the dashboards tab and then do plus dashboard to add a new one. Um, it's going to be called untitled dashboard. So you want to click on that and change it to my custom dashboard or whatever you want to call it. Um, under charts, so grab some of your grab some of your charts that you've created. So grab you know a couple of pie charts maybe and add those to a row. Um, then to add a new row, it's not just a matter of dragging something else to a new row. You need to go to the components tab, choose row component and drag it uh, below your previous one, or you could drag it above, but drag it below to create a new row. So that uh, gives you a new vessel, I guess, in which to um, add other things to it. So, so create a new row, take a table, you can resize the width of any of these as well, right? So as you put it in, you can drag it, you know, to fit your, your pie charts or tables or whatever they are appropriately. Um, so, you know, drag in a table, put in another row and put in another one. So it should look something like mine when you're done. Um, you can also put in things like headers and dividers if you want to play with those. So lots of different things you can add in here. Um, and when you're done adjusting it, you know, however you want it to look, it should look something like mine, but not necessarily, then you can save it. Um, you can also publish your dashboard because remember, you're the only one that can see it until you publish it. So if you click on the draft button uh, or draft um, the gray oval at the top here, then, you know, it'll, it'll publish it. And you can click the star icon if you want to add it to your favorites on the home tab. Uh, so, uh, Pause here as usual, build this out, take some time to play with it, add in some dividers, adjust the width, add some different things and save it. And uh, we will come back and take this up in just a minute. All right, welcome back. So build your dashboard, you're going to dashboard. You say new dashboard. Give it a name. Whatever you want to call it, my new dashboard. Oops, can't spell. So we have our new dashboard and of course it starts as blank, right? So from the charts tab here, we could choose a couple charts. So let's choose our pie. Um, Let's see, what else did we create? No, that's a table. Uh, well, whatever you want to, whatever you want to drag in here, totally up to you. Um, you know, we can go to the components tab, and we can drag a new row. You can also drag a new column as well. We'll drag a new row, so now it has empty row. So then if we go over here, then we can drag, you know, a few things into the into the rows. Um, completely up to you. So you build this any uh, way you feel is uh, exciting for you personally. Um, you can, you know, as I said, you can add out of components, you can add a few other things, headers, uh, dividers, tabs, if you want to tab it out, you could do all that. When you're ready and you think it's great, you could do a save. Uh, so there's my dashboard. And 
you know, from here, I could go in and see, uh, you know, I could go in and refresh it here. I could explore it. Uh, so go into Chart Explorer, which is basically where we were in the Charts tab. Uh, I could see the query that was run. I can maximize that chart, download it as an image. I can export it as CSV. Uh, so lots of options here in what you do. Um, we can also do things like scheduling and, and, and whatnot, editing. Um, so, and then click the draft here to publish it. So now everyone can see it and click the star so that you can favorite it. So it shows up on your, on your homepage. Now you created it. So it's going to show up on your homepage anyway, as a mine, but, um, you know, if you wish to do that, you certainly can. So we'll, we'll leave that published. Um, and that is it for that. So we will move on to our next, uh, lab, which is scheduled reports. So we are, we're, we're getting near the end. So, so lab 11 scheduled reports. So here we're going to, uh, schedule a report. So from your scheduling tab, uh, you're going to do a plus schedule. Uh, you're going to give it a report name, whatever you want to call your report, totally up to you. Um, I would use dash and your initials, but, um, and then under report schedule, you can pick day, week, month for occurrence. You can select your, uh, time in 24 hour format. You can change your time zone if you need to, um, uh, under message content you want to choose either chart or dashboard. So totally up to you what you want to deliver. So you could deliver a whole dashboard with many charts, or you could just, you know, deliver a single chart on a, on a scheduled basis. Um, and then of course, in the pull down, you're going to choose what you want to, uh, what you want to use. So I would suggest you use the dashboard that you just created just, you know, for this example, uh, under format, is it a PNG or is it a, is a CSV? So PNG is going to, to deliver you a picture of the, of the dashboard at that instance in time or chart, excuse me. Um, CSV, if it's a single chart, it's going to give you one common delimited file. If it's a dashboard though, it's going to be split into multiple comma delimited files. Uh, then you want to add your email or multiple emails. So if you're adding multiple emails, you're going to, you're going to separate those with a comma or semicolon. Um, and then when you're done, you're going to save that. Um, and then, uh, basically it's going to look like this. So you're going to get an email, um, with the, with the report. So here's the system generated report uh, to whoever it is. And it's, it'll come as an attachment. So it, it may come as an attachment as a, as an image file, which, you know, here's an example here of what a dashboard might look like. Um, or if it's a CSV, um, if it's a single chart, then you're going to get a single CSV. If it's, if it's a uh, dashboard, then you're going to get a zip file that contains many CSVs. So each chart is going to be its own CSV file. So depending on how you want to receive those, um, then, you know, then that's how you create it. But so take a minute, schedule your report to run, uh, and then come back and we will walk through it together. Okay. Welcome back. So we will, uh, go to the schedules tab here. We're going to create a new schedule. We're going to give it a name. So uh, you can give it a description, optional, up to you. You can also activate it here, yes or no. Um, choose, do you want day, week, month? So we'll choose a day at 8 a.m. Um, you can change your time zone. If you wish to, uh, you can choose dashboard or chart. So we'll choose dashboard and we'll create, we'll choose the one that I just added, uh, then a PNG or a CSV. So we'll, we'll give it to me as a picture. That's fine. And then you can add your, uh, your, your email address in or multiple email addresses in, should you wish to click add when you're ready. 
right? And here is our new chart that we created. I can activate it. And you are ready to go. So um, simple as that, right? And then you can go here, see the execution log. Uh, if you want to edit it, so only the owner has ability to edit. Uh, and then you can delete it should you wish to. Um, but yeah, it, 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 that's as simple as that. You can also bulk select multiple if you wanted to, uh, say, delete multiple or, or, or um, make changes on multiple. Okay, so we can move on. So next lab is lab 12, which is uh, exporting and importing a dashboard file. Um, so this is, you know, why you would want to do this? Well, uh, you know, the beauty of this is that you can pre-build, you know, a charts and a dashboard in your lab and send it to someone else. Or let's say tech support wants you to run a really specific report. They could generate that report, send you a dashboard file, which you import. Um, and then and then from there, you know, you run the report on your data and then you could, you know, export that report out, right, to give them the results that we're looking for. Um, you could also, you know, build a user community and, and publish really interesting dashboards and charts that you found, you know, useful in your environment that others may find very useful. So this is pretty simple. So, um, so you go to, to the dashboards tab, um, and then you go to settings and import dashboard. We're starting with an import. Um, you're going to browse to your uh, so you choose file and then browse to the file that you want to upload. It's it's going to be it's always called a dot dashboard, um, and then click upload, and then uh, the database is always Apache Druid, by the way. Uh, click upload, uh, and then in a few seconds, your your imported dashboard will be ready to go. Um, it you know be sure to publish it because it's going to come in as a draft, right? So only you'll be able to see it. Um, so for this example, here's a tiny URL. Um, where you can pull a, a sample dashboard file, which actually has some very cool um, charts in it. So try that. I'll give you a few minutes to download that dashboard file um, and try importing it, and then we will move on to export. Okay, so we'll go to dashboards here. We're going to go to settings and import dashboard. We're going to choose new file, import our dashboard file, uh, which is likely the one you you just uh, downloaded, but it could be any dashboard file. And we'll do an upload. And it takes a couple minutes, right? Uh, not even a couple minutes, a few seconds, because it's got to pull that file into the cloud. Uh, and the, here we see our, our new dashboard that we just imported. Um, so again, it's in draft status. It's modified right now. It was created by this user. So lab user 10 in this case. Um, oh, under actions, you can see it disappears, but we could delete action. Uh, we can export. We could also bulk select too if you wanted to delete a whole bunch or export a bunch. But then we can click on that guy and then it's going to pull that data in. So as I said, this is kind of an interesting um, uh, dashboard, you know, top manufacturers by client count, average airtime utilization, signal and noise, um, you know, traffic over time, uh, client distribution by Wi-Fi capability, switch counts. So it's some interesting things that they all get imported in. I, I don't know who built this dashboard to be honest with you, and I wish I did because I could give them credit. But it's a it's a it's a pretty good dashboard to give you a a overview of multiple different types of uh, of charts that can be done. And then we're going to move on now to export. So export a dashboard file. So from the dashboard tab, you highlight the dashboard you want and you choose the export button, right? So as I showed you just a minute ago, you hover over the actions and it's going to show you that that export button. Um, and so you click the export and it's going to save a dashboard file to your 
to your device. So um, it happens really quickly. The file name is year, month, date, and then our um, minute, second dot dashboard is how that gets titled. You can go in and rename that so the system doesn't care uh, what the what the um, name is when you go in and import it. So I would rename it to something that makes sense to you. Um, and then, you know, be sure to share your, your beautiful work with the community. Uh, so I'll give you a minute. You can, you can walk through that and then we will take it up together. Okay. Hopefully that was successful for you. Pretty easy one. So here's the dashboard that I created previously. So actions here, I just export it. And there is my new file. So as quick as that, a couple of seconds later, you can take that dashboard file, you can email it to people, you can you know post it to a public archive if you wish to. Um, you know, if you are a reseller or an, or an integrator, you know you can pre-build dashboards to send out to your uh, your clients. So lots of useful reasons why there's those dashboards, import and export, uh, and an excellent piece of data studio. Okay, so that is the end of the labs. Uh, so please help your instructor by deleting all those charts if you are using um, a, uh, a, one of our instances. If you're using your own instance, feel free to leave them all there for your reference and you, know, you can come back to them and hopefully you find them useful. Um, but that's it for this class. So I hope you got a lot out of it. Uh, there is an advanced class that's coming, so uh, hold on for that, but some advanced filtering and advanced um, uh, metrics and function types, uh, so we'll explain those, uh, as well as some scenarios. So we will give you a scenario, and on your own, you can go out and build uh, a chart to, to meet the needs of that scenario. But that's it for today, and I hope you, uh, I hope you really enjoyed the class, and we appreciated having you. So thanks very much and take care.